welcome to the Studio African Utility Week. I'm Rose Bundock and I'm joined now by Marie Stonegaard, Head of Utilities at Ericsson. Yes. Thank you for joining us, Marie. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. We have been seeing Ericsson a lot in the global metering smart grid space in terms of winning uh, metering rollouts in Estonia, um, in Norway. Can you tell us What's, what's going on at Ericsson? There's obviously, there's been a change. What's, what's happening? There is a change. Uh, uh, Ericsson has the tra tra tradition of being in the telco space and have been so for over 130 years. But now since the last three or four years, we've also been looking into new industries because we can see there are other industries also need a similar trans transformation as the telco did. And, um, so now, since last year, in, in March, we are ramping up three new industries, public safety, transportation and uh, utilities. And I then work in the utility space. And um, we are focusing on many different things, uh, but mainly it is now rolling out smart meters in some of the regions where that is um, happening, but also we are trying to help customers in uh, increasing the smartness of the grid, helping them to monitor the grid in a better way and, and to operate it uh, with, with excellence. Um, and that experience we have from telecom, and I think we can also uh, take some of the experiences from what the telco industry did and then to transform it over to utilities. So would you offer a utility like an end-to-end -end service? Is, is that the yeah, we can do that for, for metering, definitely we can do that. We can just offer a meter value to the customers or deliver a meter value to the customer at the frequency that the customer wants. So that is one of the areas definitely where we can manage the service for the customer. Okay, and you've obviously, uh, you're getting business in your Northern Europe. Um, and beyond that, have you got, you know, kind of global ambitions? No, we are actually ramping up this uh, globally. So it's not only Nord Northern Europe, the ones you were mentioning, yes, that was in Europe. But we do have customers in Southern Europe, we do have customers even actually in, in Africa that we are talking with. We have in the Middle East, we have contracts in the States with, for example, Duke Energy, uh, Hydro Quebec, we have uh, South America as well. So we are ramping up this initiative globally for sure and in the end of this year we will have people and resources in all our 10 regions. We have divided our world into okay. 10 regions. Uh, so we will have utilities up and running in the end of this year uh, everywhere. Okay. And what needs would you say, I mean obviously it varies region to region, but what needs do the utilities have? What are you, what are you kind yeah. of hearing them tell you? I mean the, the global outlook for utilities is so different dependent on where you are and maybe that is one of the challenges because there are there is no global standardization or a global way of doing things or you know one size fits all type yeah. of thing. Uh, in Europe for example you have a stagnating uh, power demand, here you have an increasing power demand, in Asia the same, uh, but there are different solutions dependent on the region and where we go. Now. In most countries there is a need for energy efficiency and to try to operate uh, everything in, in a better way uh, or with higher excellence. So that is kind of common for everyone. And most countries are also focusing more on the consumer, trying to uh, increase the quality of their services to the consumer, which is also an area where Ericsson have been working a lot with customer experience. Uh, so I think we, um, we see some, some trends, but um, Africa, Asia, it's more about technical and commercial losses and try to help and support in that. Europe, it's a lot about new products and services for the end consumers and metering. Uh, in um, the States, the same, a lot about new products and services. Latin America, it's more uh, rolling out meters, controlling the grid, try to increase the quality of the grid infrastructure. So it's a bit different. So you've been talking at the conference about the networked um, society. Mm -hmm. In those different regions, would they all? Would you eventually build up to that same goal? Yeah, definitely. So, so our vision is that many things will be connected in the future. 
we're talking about 50 billion devices being connected in 15 years from now. I think it might even go faster than that. But yes, we believe that cars will be connected, that ferries will be connected, that of course the grid will be connected. Uh, people through the phones are already connected today, but things in the house will be connected. You can have sub-metering in your socket so that you can switch on and off your telly uh, when you're sitting here in South Africa and my kids are back home in Sweden. So there is technology already today and we believe that this vision of the network society will happen everywhere. It will just be a different pace, of course, but yes, mm. it will happen. And what, I mean, from, from coming to Africa and seeing and hearing from utilities about their particular concerns, what kind of smart grid um, applications would, would you bring over immediately or what, what are immediately relevant, would you say? The interest now when I speak to people is a lot about smart metering and they have mm. already lots of pilots ongoing, but I think, you know, what Af Africa can do is also to take a frog leap into the smart society and try to look at it more from a macro perspective and see how things can be connected between the different sectors, uh, which is something we didn't do as much in Europe. We have done more individual initiatives uh, between the different sectors and now we try to connect those things, building smart cities, building smart societies to increase traffic flow or to get more intelligence into the system, transportation, electricity for example, if you have EVs traveling around. So hopefully Africa could investigate and, uh, and the different initiatives across the globe and then pick the ones that fits best with the needs here. Uh, that, that is definitely what I would recommend. Uh, but smart metering is an easy one, but then the second one would be commercial and technical losses that we need to mm. support with in order to reduce the losses in the system so that what you produce actually reaches the end consumer and also is being invoiced. So you mentioned that, that you know, utilities are looking for revenue losses, well to improve revenue losses, and what kind of functionality would you recommend on the metering technology? Well that's a difficult question for me to answer. What I think we need in order to detect the losses, you need to have metering more frequent in the system. So you have sub-metering out on various levels in medium voltage and low voltage so that you can detect uh, typical frauds or, or other type of, of losses that you might have. If you do have a smart meter at the residential level, then of course you can detect if you also have business intelligence systems whether the meter all of a sudden is behaving in a different way. So that will solve some of the problems. Uh, so, so that is something that would be needed uh, in order to detect that. So what is Ericsson's approach if a utility from Uganda comes to you and says, look, you know, we've got this particular need. What's the approach that you're, you're taking to kind of... Yeah, I mean, first of all, we look at the requirements from the government. There are so different regulatory frameworks mm. all across the globe. I mean, even between Sweden, UK, South Africa, Australia, you have four different market dynamics, four different regulations. Uh, so we need to understand first, of course, the national requirements, and that we do first. Dependent on that, we look at the needs, we look at the losses, we look at uh, the current situation with the mix of residential customers and B2B customers, and then based on that, we. Uh, propose a, a plan going forward. And there's been a lot of talk at the conference about turning consumers from being passive receivers yeah. of power to, to active. Um, what's Ericsson's stance on that? Yes, we do believe that people need to uh, be more active and we would like to see people be more interested in electricity or, or utilities, water electricity or whatever have you. Uh, today most people don't even know how much they consume on an annual basis. So I think we need to start somewhere. Uh, I personally uh, do not believe that people change their behavior dramatically, but I do believe that we can support them with technology so that they can become energy efficient mm. and not having to change completely the way of living uh, so that they can continue to, to shower in hot water whenever they want mm. to. Uh, but we can help them and to, to give them information on 
the, the load of the system, whether there is renewable in the system or whether it's fossil um, fuels in the system, what the electricity price is, is like. And then of course the user can decide him or herself whether he wants to act on that. Alternatively, we can put technology in household appliances that can automatically detect whether the system has low load and for that reason maybe then start to be active or not. That's what I hope, that people or things will be connected, things will have a smartness so that people can remain and continue with their comfort and not change their behaviour completely. And lastly, can I ask you, I mean, Ericsson obviously sees opportunity within smart grid, you know, the global market. I mean, what are your kind of predictions over the next year? Where do you see the kind of hot uh, areas? Markets. Yeah. I see them actually everywhere because this industry needs a transformation, that's for sure. Uh, so, so Asia in one way with the need of increasing power demands, you know, we can build up microgrids to support villages that don't have power today. Mm. Same with Africa. And then in Europe it's a totally different uh, requirement than in Asia and Africa, but definitely they need transformation as well because they need to serve the customers in a different way and offer them other type of products and services. So for that reason it's also a hotspot. Same with the same, same Latin America. Australia is taking a totally different path and, and going towards another type of regulation than Europe and, and others are doing, which is also very interesting to follow. So it's happening everywhere but in different ways. So utilities is a really exciting industry to be working in right now. Great, well we wish you lots of luck with it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And that's all from the Studio Africa Utility Week. Thanks for watching.